OK, so you want information to automatically repeat within your Word document. So I've got a offsite field trip form here. And when I type the child's name in this part of the form, I want it to automatically appear down here. And when I type the parent's name here, I want it to automatically appear here and also in this section of the form. I'm going to show you two methods you can use. The first method is slightly simpler, but has some limitations. The second method requires you to use form controls and to also restrict editing in your document. So you can choose which method is most appropriate for you. Now, using the first method, what I'm going to do is replace this text with a couple of spaces. Then I'm going to select those spaces and I'm going to go to the insert tab on my ribbon. Then I'm going to go to the links group and then to the bookmark button. I'm now going to give this bookmark a name and it can't have spaces in it. And I'm going to click on add. And you can see now I've got those square brackets around that bookmark. Now, if you can't see those square brackets, you do need to show them. And to show them, you go to File, Options, Advanced, scroll down. And under Show Document Content, you need to tick this option, Show Bookmarks. And it's also worth showing field shading. Change that to Always. Click on OK. So you can see the shading there. Now, once you set up that bookmark, you can then cross-reference that. So I'm going to select this text here, the placeholder for the child's name, and I'm going to click on this cross-reference button. That's directly under the bookmark button. And your reference type needs to be bookmark, and your insert reference to needs to be bookmark text. Then you select the bookmark you want to create a cross-reference to. And there it is, child's name. So I click on insert, click on close. So at the moment, I'm just going to see a gray shaded area. That's the field essentially that cross references my bookmark. I'm going to put an extra space after that field. So now if I go up here and I type something within these square brackets, so I type the child's name. So what I now need to do is update the cross reference. So I can do that by just right clicking in this field area here and choosing update field. You can also use F9 to update a field. And you can see that it's updated with the student's name. Now that gray shading will not print. If I go to file and print. You can see that Chloe Parker's name is there without the gray shading. Probably need to close the spacing there. And obviously if I didn't want the bold formatting on the text. I could just select the text and use Control B on my keyboard to take the bold formatting off. Right, let's do the same thing for the parent's name. So I would delete the current placeholder and replace it with a couple of spaces. Select the spaces. Go to the Insert tab on the ribbon. Go to Bookmark. Give the bookmark a name, parent's name. Click on Add. Then select the first area where I want the parent's name to repeat. I go to cross-reference, choose the relevant bookmark, click on insert, click on close. So I might need a space there. And then I also need to place the parent's name down here. So I click into that area, go to cross-reference, choose the relevant bookmark, click on insert, click on close. So now if I type the parent's name in. If I want to update both of those cross references, what I could do is select the whole document. So that's Control A, right click, Update Fields, and you can see that the name appears in both places. OK, so that's the first method for getting information to repeat in your Word document. Let's move on to the second method. Now, to use the second method, you will need to show the Developer tab on your ribbon. And you can see I've got the Developer tab visible here. If you can't see the Developer tab, right-click on one of the other tabs, doesn't matter which one it is, and choose Customize the Ribbon. And then 
you need to make sure that developer is ticked down here. So then you need to click where you want the first instance of the repeated text to appear in your document. So I'm initially going to type the child's name in this part of the form. You can see my flashing cursor there. So I go to the developer tab and in the controls group, I click on this little legacy tools menu button and under legacy forms, I select this control text form field. You can see that it puts two gray square brackets in with shading behind it. So then you go to properties and you need to create a bookmark for this text form field. So I'm going to call this child's name and I need to tick this option calculate on exit and then click on OK. So I then need to do the same thing for the parent's name. So I click into position, go back to this menu and I click on this text form fields button and then I click on properties and I create a bookmark for this form field. And I must tick this option, calculate on exit. Okay, so once you've set up the form fields properly, you then need to go to the part of the document where you want the text to repeat. So I want the parent's name to appear here after this word I. I'll put a comma after the word I and then a space. And then on my keyboard, I press Control F9 and you'll see it puts those brace brackets in your document. Within the brace brackets, you type ref in capital letters, space, and then the name of the bookmark that you created for your text form field. So the first one is parent's name. And then I need to do the same thing for the child's name. So I'll delete that text. Use the same keyboard combination, Control F9. And I type in ref child's name. And I need a space after that brace bracket. I also want the parent's name down here. So I do the same thing. Control F9. Ref parent's name. So I've set up all my references. And I've got my text form fields. So the next step is to restrict editing. So you'll see on the developer tab, you've got this restrict editing button. So if I click on it, you'll get on the right of your screen, this restrict editing task pane. So what you need to do under section two, editing restrictions is tick this little tick box here. And then from this drop down, choose filling in forms. And then you need to click this button. Yes, start enforcing protection. You can put in a password if you like. And you'll notice that those references are now invisible, but that's normal. So what you do is you click into your first form field and you type, in my example, the name of the student. And then if I tab, that will take me to the next form field. And you can see down here, it's automatically put the student's name in this section of the form. So then I'll type the parent's name and tab. And you'll see that it doesn't work. Now, the reason that it doesn't work is you need at least one other text form field after this last text form field that you've used where you want to have repeating text. So it's a bit of a shame that that is the case, but unfortunately, this is how it works. What I'll do is stop protection and I'm going to put in another form field. So, for example, I might click here in the address part of the document. But this form field that I'm going to create here doesn't have information that needs to be repeated elsewhere in the document. So now, if I enforce protection again, click back up in this text form field and tab, you can see it's automatically put in the name of the parent here and here. So this method is in some ways more automated than the first method I showed you with the bookmarks, because when you're just using bookmarks and cross-referencing them, you have to refresh manually. This refreshes automatically because we have that setting in our properties, calculate on exit. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. 
Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.